So, praise God from whom all blessings flow. How you smelling this morning? Do you smell like Christ? Trana, do you need some? Okay. Okay. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we're so thankful that we are here this morning and so are you. And that the Holy Spirit is our helper. And he is our strengthener and he is our counselor. And Lord, we just believe that we have anointing from the Father, that we have the heart of the Father God to my heart, to the hearts of the ladies that are here this morning. And we just pray, we just thank you that there's a freedom and an anointing, Lord, and a boldness to speak your word because we stand on your word, Lord, and there's victory in Jesus' name. Amen. We're so thankful everybody's here. And Stephen and Kim, thank you for singing that song. That kind of uh, gets me into where we're going just a little bit this morning. We're just going to hit there for a little bit. And uh, Trina, let me ask you this. Where would you guys... Trina, you're not listening. You want me to snap my fingers? We used to snap our fingers in church and the kids would... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Where would you and Mark been going that he said he didn't want to go through Memphis? Where would be the destination? Detroit, that's what I thought. Okay, listen to this. Uh, We're going to just talk about the the spirit of faith and how important it is, the things we say, if we believe it in our heart, and then it's very important that our heart and our mouth are in agreement. Or what we say can cancel out what our heart says. And so the spirit of faith is this. Uh, and, and you don't need to look this up. I'm, we're just going to go through it fast because I've got a lot here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13 And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore spoke. We also believe and we speak. And that's very important, what we believe and speak. So uh, they sang about dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And so, the, uh, and I'm not going to quote the whole, the whole Psalms, but he, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and I will say. And so, somehow or other, I feel like I'm not, I'm not getting you. You're not with me. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do, we want to make this our declaration of faith, and, and this is where we're dwelling. We say, I am dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, and I am abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, and I say that you are my God, and in you I trust. And then, uh, and so um, it's important what we say. So we say, I am dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, and I'm abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, and I say, Lord, you're my refuge, you are my, my place of security. You are my secret place. You are my protection. You are my safe place. You cover me with your feathers. Uh, This is a place of quiet and rest. And I thought about this. This is a place of love. This is a place of warmth. This is where we're living. Near to the heart of God. And there was an old chorus that said, There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, near to the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee near to the heart of God. Do you know that's where you're living? Near to the heart of God. And so, and then we say, and, and just in a passing thought, you know, this is a secret place. And the world doesn't know anything about it. Satan doesn't know anything about it. This is like the secret garden. We go in through the door, which is Jesus, and we're, we're there with him. And then you're my fortress, you're my strength, you're my power, you're my might. That's the de- declaration of my faith. I say I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's something we do, isn't it? 
And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we've talked about being in the presence of the Lord is where the fullness of joy is. If you feel like you kind of lost your joy, if you feel like you're kind of weak, we need to get into the presence of the Lord and let him help us, okay? Because that's just what happens there. And so uh, we go in the strength of the Lord and in his presence. So he is our God. And so we take our trust and we put it in him. I was telling Barbara last night, I, I've got a Jer, uh, Jewish Bible and I've noticed most places, instead of faith, it says trust. And so I got to thinking, you know, that's something, sometimes faith can kind of be elusive and you say, I got faith. Well, if there's one thing, a declaration of our faith, we can say this, I'm trusting you, Lord. Actually, that's putting faith in, in to, to work. I trust you. So I put my trust in you. I put my confidence in you. So it's like this. With this 91st Psalm, it's like a, a uh, coin. Uh, in order for a coin to be legal tender, it has to have something on both sides. And so on this side of the coin, we, we declare... God, you're, I'm living in the secret place. I'm abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. You're my fortress. You're my God. You're my hiding place. And I say you're going to take care of me. So that's on one side of the coin. So on the other side of the coin, then the rest of the 91st Psalm can work. He's going to use angels to take care of us. Satan is under our feet. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We call unto him and he answers us and he delivers us and he honors us. So it takes both. It takes what we say and then it puts him into action and then it works. We can spend it. Praise the Lord. So just recently I've, I've thought about this. Um... Well, let me, let me tell you this scripture, and I, I don't know where it is. Maybe somebody else does, but it says, if you serve the Lord, make the Lord, if you serve him, he's going to bless your food, and he's going to bless your water. And you know, sometimes people, the food doesn't do them any good. They don't get any nourishment from it. There's things we take for granted. And so this is, we serve him, he's going to bless our food and water, and then he says, on top of that, I'm going to take sickness away from the midst of you. Why? Because, see, there's two sides of the coin there, too. You serve me, and this is what I'm going to do. Okay? So, what we want to do, no matter what happens in our life, no matter what situation, no matter if there's an accident, and your car is totaled, Kim... No matter if we had... Now, this, this is a real drastic thing. We have a sweet, sweet uh, lady in our church. And it's a dear friend of ours. Her husband just committed suicide. He shot himself. Total devastation. But where is she living? She's living in the secret place of the most... When do we need it? You know, uh, Jesus is our personal Savior. Now, I don't need... I don't need what Maggie needs right now, the comfort that she needs, but the Lord's helping her. Um, and I, I, I haven't been in a wreck lately, but I know Kim and Stephen, there were things that they had to just believe God for. Yeah. And he did, I pull it off, and he gives peace yeah. and comfort. Yeah. Ooh, he, he just, that's, we can live in that comfort under the shadow of the Almighty. We can live there. That's where we live. But there's one thing we got to do. We have to remember who we are. Who are we? Children of God. We've been redeemed. We've been redeemed from sickness and poverty and disease, everything. And then you have to remember where you're living. Where are we living? Tell me. In, yes, in the secret place. We're in Christ. Remember we had that circle yesterday and we... Are in Christ. That's where we're living. And who do you know? Who do you know? I am dwelling in the secret place. Abiding under. Hey we know the almighty. We know Jesus. We know our heavenly father. And what do you say? 
He is my refuge, my fortress. You are my God. So you are my shepherd. You're my peace. You're my provider. You're my righteousness. You are my victory. And you are there. Where I am, you are there. And, and a real comfort is uh, when, when you have children that are away from you a ways, hey, God's there too. He's there. Praise the Lord. So we need to talk to ourselves. Get yourself in position. See yourself in the secret place. And uh, where we're putting, when we put our trust in him, then he can do something. If we're not trusting him, we tie God's hands. If we're not trusting him, the angels stand back and they say, I wish you wouldn't talk that way. I can't do anything for you. So we overcome the devil. We overcome the, the, the things that he tries to to he, his total purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. And we don't say God does that. He, he provides, doesn't he? He forgives all our iniquities and he heals all of our diseases. He delivers us and sets us free. And so we overcome the devil and all his, his plans that he has for us. By uh, the blood of the lamb. Because Jesus has already purchased our victory. He's purchased our healing. He's purchased our wisdom. He's purchased our sanctification. He's purchased everything on the cross. And paid for with his blood. And so we just say yes. I believe that. I believe that I'm redeemed. I believe. Uh, This hip thing was a. That I had to have a replacement of a hip. Was because of arthritis. Guess what? I didn't even know it was there. It was doing its dirty work. And I didn't even know it was there. And uh, so then you know you have. I have a crooked finger here. And uh, some of them go. And so it's arthritis. And the the therapist the other day. My knee popped. And she said. Oh that's arthritis. So you know what? I found out in the word of God. That I'm redeemed from arthritis. It says. I will. I, I sent my word and healed you and delivered you from your destructions. So I believe that, that there's power of the Almighty, and this is what I'm confessing, that he can deliver me from crooked fingers. He can deliver me from, I don't want to have a, a hip, I mean a knee replacement. No way. Don't you think God could do that for me, Trina? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do we do in the secret place? We dwell there and it's a place of activity. It's a place of safety, a place of rest. But we believe God. We speak the word. We trust him. We submit to the Lord and we resist the devil. Hey, this is where the fullness of the joy of the Lord is. And what does that give us? Strength. Praise God. So, and we just keep on walking in the light with Jesus. It's a place of of joy and happiness and peace. And we believe God. This is a place when we live in the secret place of the Most High. That's the abundant life. Whatever comes up, God has an answer for. He he has has a victory for us. So this is also a place where all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's where the the word of God works. That's where the name of Jesus works together. And that's where the blood of Jesus works. It's where the Holy Ghost works. He anoints the word of God. And this, this is where all things work together, right in the secret place of the Most High. If we, if we live, uh, I think in that song you said, as we dwell, as we stay in the secret place. And stay in Christ. That's where light is. And I was thinking this morning, that's where heaven is. Outside of the circle is hell. But we, we live and abide and walk in the secret place of the Most High. Um, Stephen, do you have, I'm not, I'm not going to sing it, but could you put it up that, that uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14? And we'll just read it together. And I'm going to take off on that just a little bit. I don't even know what translation I used there, but that's what I had my salt group learn. And so, is it there? I don't know.
No, it's not. This is what it says. I'll say it, and if you can find it, you can put it up. If you can't, we'll just say it again. It says, now, thanks be to God. It's this same scripture, but it's a different thing. And th- this is why my mama, when years ago, she was a Sunday school teacher for years and stuff, and that was when different translations first started coming out, and she had a, a fit. Because she said, we need to all be saying the same thing. Memorize the same scriptures. And so see, this is an illustration of what she's talking about. Now, thanks be to God who in Christ always causes me to triumph. As trophies of Christ's victory. Oh, he found it. Nope, that's not it. And through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. Remember? It's amplified, amplified. <laughs> what did he say? It sounds like a lady's person. It's the amplified. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Thank you, Barb. That rang a bell with Barb. So now we're just going to go through this, and I've, I've, I've got some things I want to share that if you get a hold of, it'll give you victory. Praise God. So who do we start? Okay, you can back it up, Mr. Berman. Oh. But it says, thanks be to God who uh, in Christ always causes us to triumph. So with thankful hearts, we realize where our victory comes from. And it's through Christ. Right? So we're thankful. We have thankful, grateful hearts. When we have grateful hearts, then... Thanksgiving comes out of our mouth. And so we recognize that this is where our victory comes from, that Jesus purchased everything on the cross and paid for it with his blood. So in Christ, that's where our victory is, right? But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumph. For uh, him to lead us, what do we have to do? So we're followers of Christ. We're not just Christians. We're followers of Christ. And like Grant Lolly said, we are passionate followers of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? That's wonderful. But he always leads us in triumph. Okay, hold steady. We will follow him and we obey him and he gives us victory and he causes us to be more than conquerors and we go from victory to victory. You know, another thing comes up and, and, and I'll just allude to this car accident that that uh, Stephen and Kim had you know you just think well why does that have to happen well it's another time of victory yeah, yeah. hey God how are you going to take care of this yeah. and and so that's how God took care of it I just rejoice in the fact that the insurance bought them a brand new car or not a brand new car but it's a wonderful car and it's all paid for yeah. so the devil what the devil meant for evil, hey, and they and re- they rejoice every time Kim drives out of the driveway. She's praising God. So he leads us in triumph as as trophies. What did I do with that trophy? There it is. I didn't want Hunter to see it. Okay, he leads us as trophies. So every time, it's like, does that say a parade? No, that other verse said a parade. Message Bible talked about just from place to place, a victory parade. We're walking. So every time, wherever we go in life, that person is like a trophy. Healed. Trina's healed. Lily has had had safety as she's been driving through the United States in her little car that I wish she had somebody else with her, but that's just grandma talking. Um, But she, you know, angels are taking care of her. And so Lily is like a trophy of Christ's victory that he's taking care of her. Okay, let me tell you this little story. I asked Hunter this morning, he thought he was about in the fifth grade, and he was playing basketball. He had not made... One basketball the whole basketball season. One, one, he hadn't scored at all. And so they were in this tournament. And they'd, they'd gone clear to the end of the tournament. And I think there were three games. And they had won two. There was one more game. 
and it was getting down to the end of the game and I believe Hunter had his mom and daddy pray with him. Just pray that I'll make one basket. Well, you know what happened? It got down to the last few seconds and I, before I, I heard it was two, so we'll say two, that's really effective. Uh, the <laughs> last two, last two seconds of the game and guess what? Hunter made a basket. He followed his father's instructions as a coach and did just exactly what his daddy said and made, up a, made a layup and he won the game for the team. That was an answer to prayer. That was victory. And then he got the trophy. Got the trophy. And so Kim said, it was so neat at home. He just, see now he was 10 years old. And he just carried this around. And he said, oh, it just feels good to carry it. It just feels good. So God rejoices over the victories in our life. So I thought of this scripture. It says in... Um, Isaiah 41 10 it says fear not for I'm with you be not dismayed for I'm your God I will strengthen you yes I will uphold you no I guess I will help you and I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness so that's what he does he upholds us with the right hand of his his righteousness everything that God is almighty God he upholds us and he just carries us as as a uh, trophies and he says oh it just feels good to carry you just feels good so in the uh you know the spirit of faith we're going to uh, uh use that just a minute and so this is what god says he says fear not for i'm with you so this is how we use this we declare it to be so say i'm not afraid i'm not afraid god you're with me god almighty is with me I'm not dismayed, discouraged, anxious. I'm not distraught or frustrated because you're my God. You're my peace. You're my wisdom. You're my joy. And then I'm not, I'm not weak. You know, the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. And sometimes you think, oh, don't say that. What have you got on your foot? Praise God, your foot's healed. Uh, but I'm strong. I'm not weak. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He strengthens me, me with might on, by his spirit in my inner man. So I'm strong on the inside and I'm strong on the outside. And Bill and I use this scripture that as our days are, so shall our strength be. You know, the days of the righteous just go brighter and brighter until the perfect day. As you get older, you don't get weak and nothing and gloomy. No, we're, we get brighter and brighter. Hey, we still got the life of God in us. We're still the salt of the earth. And then he says, uh, I, I'm not helpless because you're my ever-present help. You're my present help in this time of need. You're my helper. And I'm not down under. I'm not discouraged because you're upholding me. With the right hand of your righteousness. Your right hand of love. Everything that is in God's hand. He's upholding us with it. Amen. Praise God. So we are trophies of Christ's victory. And. Through us spreads and makes evident. The fragrance of the knowledge of God. Everywhere. Through us. So, here's what happens. Um, scent, think with me a minute, scent is powerful. It's either pleasant or it's unpleasant. But scent cannot be seen and it cannot be heard and you can't touch it. But you can smell it. And so we can identify things by the smell. You can be driving down the road and there is an odiferous smell that comes in the car and you think, ooh, that's a skunk. Did we hit that skunk? But in your mind's eye, in your imagination, what did you see? A skunk, right? And, um, and you can tell if there, there's a propane leak in your house. Ooh, 
And so you can't see propane, but you can smell it, and you know you've got to do something about it. <laughs> Gives you instructions, doesn't it? And then I thought about the sweet smell of a newborn baby, you know, the, just the, oh, my goodness. Isn't that a tender, sweet smell? And so you can see it. Fragrance implies um, a spicy smell, uh, a balsam smell, a sweet odor. And some celebrities, and I, well, I was thinking about this, uh, I remember Elizabeth Taylor, I think she had a purple bottle of white. Well, there you got it. Yeah. yeah. And so we got Elizabeth Taylor and white diamonds together. So celebrities um, have a special perfume that they wear. Some. And in years ago, Ladies Home Journal said that every woman should have her own fragrance. Uh and I don't do that. But anyway, <laughs> the idea, so the idea of a sick, I, I like to go through a department store, you know, where they have all those uh, uh, samples. And I just like to take a little sample. So I get a whole conglomerate. Of, <laughs> I don't know why I do that, but I just feel like doing it. The idea of a signature scent, listen, it, it was, it's an old idea. It goes back to the beginning and it's God's idea as a part of worship. It is a holy anointing oil and an incense that they used to worship God. And it has equal parts of sweet spices, of pure frankincense. And there's three other things that I can't pronounce, so I won't try to pronounce it. I don't think you can correct me, but I, I, don't, I won't even do it. But anyway, so this is all put together the perfumer, the apothecary, what's that? Anyway, um, and so it said, here this, this incense, this fragrance, this anointing oil uh, is salted and it's pure. Are you thinking? It's salted and it's pure and it's holy and it's most holy to the, to the people. And it's dedicated to God. And then here was another PS on this. It said that anybody that would make this perfume and use it for themselves would be separated from the congregation. Wow. So see what that's doing. They're taking the glory themselves. They're taking the... And so we must always, you know, uh, sometimes people can think, Oh, look what I'm doing. Look how many people got saved. Look how, you know, no, in all, in everything, we give all the glory to God. Okay, isn't that interesting? So we don't want to take the glory for ourselves. We want to give all the glory to the Lord. So fragrance, uh, let me see this. Uh, so the idea of a of, of fragrance signature Hallmark signature of fragrance uh, goes into the New Testament. And instead of being this particular fragrance, like in the Old Testament, to make people think of God when they smelled that, they thought of God, God uses Christians as his hallmark fragrance. Isn't that something? Signature scent. We are a fragrance of triumph and an essence of victory. Praise God. God identifies himself with us. What does the tail end of that one say? Wherever we go, people, they're known. What? Read it out loud, Steve. I can't. The scent of knowing him. So where we go, people might not, they can wonder, what is that scent? And it's, it's because we know God. It's the sweetness of knowing God, of knowing, of being victorious. Okay. So we can think of this question, what do people, how, what, how, what do people think of God by smelling me? Do they think he's my healer? Do they, do they think, do they know he's my comforter? It's, it's like Maggie with this disaster in her life. She can uh, experience a comfort that is unexplainable. 
I remember there was a lady that uh, was in our church and years later her husband died. He'd had emphysema for years and so fought for every breath that he breathed. And she said, you know, they just love the Lord and heaven was so real when, when he died. She said she just had to be careful how she responded around people because they didn't understand it. She was rejoicing that he was in heaven. And that was a fragrance that she had. She had a peace. She had, what, does the, what does the Holy Spirit do? He comforts. And if he comforts us, it's going to be evident. It's going to show. We're going to smell like comfort. So living for Jesus, we are a pleasing odor, aroma. There's all kinds of words, isn't there? Fragrance of Jesus follows me. Fragrance goes with us. It follows us. There's a sweet fragrance of victory, triumphant life, a sweet fragrance of the rose of Sharon because we're in Christ and Christ is in us and he's the sweet rose of Sharon. So did you know that fear has, has uh, an odor, has a scent? They say animals can tell when you're afraid just by the scent. That you, you don't know you smell like that, do you? But so anger, uh, anxiousness, frustration, that makes you stinky, doesn't it? But, in, in, uh, but he can give us his peace, which is, is beautiful, pleasant. Sweet scent of forgiveness. The essence of joy. That's a smell. So what's on the inside of us is going to come out. And I thought of this, even uh, under pressure, the sweet smell of victory. Even under pressure is when comfort's going to come out, when a soft answer turns away wrath. Mm. So you can build that yourself. I'm going to go on. Okay, now, there's, there's a scripture that says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the, way, all the uh, days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So the perfume of goodness and mercy, they smell. And in his presence, all this goes together. In his presence, we just soak up goodness and mercy. So we take this goodness and mercy, this fragrance of it on, and uh, then wherever we go, this fragrance is. Now, Sue quit, our daughter-in-law Sue used to wear, wear uh, well, she wore a, a special perfume. I can't remember what it was. And so it smelled like Sue. And she kind of messed up my... my uh, thing because she said she, that was just too strong for her, which she couldn't wear it anymore. So it kind of messed me up. I need to find out what she's wearing now, I guess. But we were up there one time. They pastor, my son, youngest son and his wife are, past, are pastors in uh, uh, Wisconsin. And so my husband and I were there. We were going to babysit the kids. That's when they were little, while Scott and Sue went visiting or something. So she had been in the bathroom. And the last thing she did, she put on some perfume. And when she went through the living room, guess what? I smelled Sue. And guess what? After she went out the door and closed the door, I still smelled Sue. Goodness, the fragrance of goodness and mercy will just follow us through life. We receive goodness and mercy, and so we give goodness. and We smell like goodness and mercy. And then the other day we were in, in Colorado Springs and there was a, a, a man and his wife there. They're up in their, their 80s. They, we've known them for, for lots of years. Uh, they had two little kids, little beautiful little girls that were run over in a box and, uh, by a truck. And uh, they didn't know Jesus and my husband was just a young... Pa- You're just in your early 20s, weren't you? And he went out to see them in any way through, uh, through the fragrance of Christ, through the fragrance of salvation, through the fragrance of the love of God that was ministered through my husband. They both got saved. 
and filled with the Holy Spirit. And they are still living for God. And they're like right at 90. You know, they're, they're, he, he said the other day, he says, I don't know what happened, but we got old. <laughs> and so his wife has um, dementia. And uh, so sometimes she's real sweet. And sometimes she just tells him she hates him. And, you know, she's not nice. When we were there, she was very nice. But she got her words mixed up. And she started saying things that she couldn't put it together. And he was so kind. He said, that's all right, Sue. He said, you're, you're all right. You're saying it right. He was so kind and so sweet. And it was such a strong fragrance of the sweetness of the Lord of the fragrance of Christ in his life to his wife isn't that wonderful okay now I want to tell you a story I want to tell you something I'm going to read this quick because it's very important you get a hold of what I'm going to share now it has been very important to me and I know you it will be important to you so uh, in uh, boy I don't know where that is I'll just start reading in in 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, and then then there's another one here. Be careful. Don't worry about anything. Listen to me. But in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, your heavenly Father. This sounds like Amplified too. This is a woman's Bible. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then humble yourself. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, cast or once and for all, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. These are instructions, aren't they? These are not, not just suggestions. And a care is anxieties, worries, concerns. Boy, there's a lot of things can just come right under those, can't they? And to cast, it means to throw something forcefully in a specific direction. Okay. God has a formula for our success. And if we do things his way, then we will think his thoughts and we will be uh, successful. Um, This is a scripture we learned when the kids were home. Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt, what, meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do all according to what is written therein. And then you will make your way successful or you will make your way prosperous. That means everything's going to work. And you will have good success. Now, um, I heard this story. I don't know whether Mark told it or what. But uh, my daughter's husband, they fly a lot. And he has the same sentiments about Memphis Airport as we do. We don't like to go through there. And so he said, I do not want to go through Memphis. And the lady said, Mr. Hankins, I think, Mr. Hankins, if you want to get to Detroit, you have to go through Memphis. So let me tell you something. If we want peace, if we want the destination of peace, we have to do it God's way. And this is, this is what he's told me to do. He has peace for us. Actually, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He said, my peace, my peace, I give to you. Peace is a, a it's, 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 and it's, it's a fruit of the Spirit. Peace is around us. Peace is in us. And our peace can be disturbed. We can choose, we can choose to be frustrated. Or Stephen, we can choose the peace that God provides and it's through the comfort of the Holy... And we're comforted. Ooh, I like that. So I'm not going to forget that, that sermon. That's really good. So this is what the Lord told me to do. Because there are cares. We all have cares. We all have anxieties. 
I mean, they, they try to get a hold of us and we have concerns. And so this is what the Lord told me to do. He said, capture those cares. Here's a care and I need a pen or I'll pretend. Thank you. Okay. He said, capture, capture that care. What's a care? Um, how about our, you know, children that are, are wayward. We're, we're going to capture that ch- care and we're going to write this down. Now we're not going to write down all the complaints. We're going to write down the promises. We're going to write down what will change it. All my children, Kim, you got some ones there, but all my children are, shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace and undisturbed composure. Uh, it's not God's will for anybody to perish. And so, and, and we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we'll be saved and our house, all of our children. And, uh, President Bush said, you know, when he had that, that thing for the children, for the schools, uh, not, not one child left behind. We're not going to have one child left behind, not one grandchild left behind. This is, this is what we're believing for. And so we write this down and what we're going to do, we're going to believe God. And this is what God told me to do. He said to make, get an old Bible that you don't use or a Bible you don't, but you don't want to use it for anything, but what I'm going to have you use it for. And this is God's hands. And this is the special place that we're going to cast all of our care. And it's very important. Now, sometimes, um, you can just, it's not a great big care, a great big uh, anxiety, but it is. You label it. You say, oh, I recognize what you are. You're an anxiety. And so uh, it's, it's very important for you to put this Bible. Uh, for a while, I just put it in my husband's office, and it was on the shelf there, and I thought, no, it needs to be where I can see it. And so I put it either on top of the piano Or we have a fireplace and there's a thing there. And so I just put that right there. And so if it's a small care, a small anxiety, you can just put it over there in your mind. Commit it to the Lord. And just, you can see it, you know. uh, 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 We used to, I was on my computer or something, but you just take a little thing and it'd go into the trash. You know, so that's what you can do with this little anxiety can just go in there and it's in God's hands. Wh- whose hands? What can these hands do? They're strong. They're hands of healing. They're almighty hands. They're hands that can do something about your care. And so... uh I have this care about uh, children that are not living for God, but there's promises. I'm like I said, you're not going to complain on this. You're going to use all all scriptures that's going to change the whole situation. And so you commit this care to God's hands and say, Father, this is what I'm doing. You told me to cast my care on you. And in the process, you're going to give me your peace. So I put my care in there, and he gives me peace. Now, so if something comes up, we can say, you know, something comes up, oh, an action that isn't right. Don't forget. Don't, here's what we do if, if, we're, if we're not careful. If, uh, if something comes up that disturbs us and we see what's ha- and it doesn't look like anything is happening. Uh, but it's like that there, there's a movie, I don't know if you've seen it, but Faith Like Potatoes. Those potatoes were growing and he couldn't see a thing. But he'd heard from God. Hey, we've heard from God. He said, cast all your care on him for he cares for you and he'll give us our peace. So... We know if, uh, we, we, we just want to leave those cares there. Remember that old song, take your burden to the Lord and leave them there? Well, this helped me. If, if uh, I start talking about it again, 
Who's got the care? Can I do anything about it? I can't do anything about it. Can he do anything about it? No, not now. Why? Because I've got it. And so uh, if you see yourself doing that, put it back in and leave it there. And so if something happens, this is what needs to come out of your mouth. And this is what you need to see. You need to see this individual in the hands of God. And leave it there. Don't tell him what to do. You know, I found out he knows a lot more than... And so we just trust him. We put our trust in him. Now, I should have just brought this down, but that's okay. Um, There's a few little things I want to add to this. Once and for all. How do you cast your care once and for all on the Lord? This, This is the care... That I've, I've just, I just, this care, this frustration, I need a house. And I don't have a house and I've got to move. And God's got to provide a house for me. And I've written that care down. Okay, that's a care and I've put it in the hands of God. Once and for all, how on earth do you do it? Once and for all, I did that. But guess what? It's like one time... Uh, Mark and Trina were there at Buena Vista where we live and uh, they were going to take us for a plane ride and there's a big mountain there, Mount Princeton. And so we took off at the airport, it's right at the foot of Mount Princeton. We took off and you know, you, you speak to your mountains and you fly over this mountain and guess what's on the other side of a mount, that mountain? Another mountain. And so that, you know, we have the authority to speak to mountains. And said, so just get out of my life. You go jump in the lake, mountain. And so that mountain's gone. And guess what? Here comes another mountain. Okay. So that care is in the hands of God. And here comes another care. You say, oh, I recognize you. You're a care. You're an anxiety. You are causing me to be concerned. And I know exactly where to put you. So once and for all, that's how we treat cares. We just take that care and put it in the hands of God. And the Lord told me, don't mess around with a care very long or you're going to get in trouble. It's like a hot potato. If a care comes, get rid of it. And it says to forcibly, you know, there we go. And so I thought about this. We get care packages. These are delivered to my house. And you know my address is on there. My name is on there. And I have to sign for it. And so if I sign for it. But this is a care package. I do not want to sign for this care package. Guess what? If you sign for the care package. You, you get more than what you bargained for. You're going to pay, pay for that care package. Uh, you're going to have no way out. This is a problem that is impossible. What am I going to do? Overwhelmed, hopelessness. This comes with the care. Frustration, worry, sleepless nights. Something else I found out, you can't go to bed and take your cares with you and go to sleep. They're not good bedfellows. (laughs) They kick. They kick and they talk and they turn and they snore all night and I can't sleep. Anxiety, ulcers, pain comes in the care package. So we just don't accept the care package. We just immediately give that care. You have to recognize the care. Return to sender. sender. That's a good deal. Good deal. Just get out of here. (laughs) <laughs> good job good job okay so even I've, I've thought about this even and, and like with Maggie with her husband committing suicide now that's a pretty small care package but what if it was a great big care package do we ever have the temptation to think well I've got to kind of be in on this 
I've got to make sure this turns out right. Huh? Or I've got to go with the suggestions of, of, um, of the psychiatrist, of the doctors. Uh, I've got to do what they say. No, where's the care? The care is in God's hands. And then a scripture that I put with it, and I do not know where this is, but it says this, to roll your works, to commit your works to the Lord. So I just commit all this, all this. I need a house. I commit that into the hands of God. I cast that care on the hands of, in the hands of God. And then it says, your thoughts will be established. You'll start thinking the right thing. But in the process, this peace that passes understanding will be yours. Okay? So our cares are in the hands of the Lord. Does that, does that help you? Now, I, there's one thing about it. Sometimes I'm lazy. I don't like to write things down. I'm not a good journalist. And so sometimes I'll think, now that's what I need to do. And so sometimes I'll just uh, uh, think about it, but I don't really put it in there on purpose. And I found that if this is something too. And Kim, I'm trying to finish up here. Um, um, oh, phooey, I hope I have it. This is if this fun. You can go through there and read what you. There's victory. Yes. This is this happened. Yes. It's no longer there. Yes. Let me read you. Now this is this is an example. I had I had a, a a salt group which is seasoned adults living triumphant, and this couple were with us from the beginning, which was uh, two or three years, something like that. And then they started up some care groups, and guess what? This couple. They left me. They decided they, you know, wanted to go to this other care group. And what did it make me feel like? I felt uh, abandoned. I felt rejection. I felt sorry for myself. And I just thought, oh, well, if, you know, if everybody quits, I'll just quit too. Isn't that awful? But it, I didn't stay there. So I find, this is what I did. I felt really, really sad. You know, I could have gone home and cried. Gone to bed and cried and gone that way. But I, I taught myself, so, you know, you do what you preach. So I decided I'd do that. So here's what I, here's what I wrote down. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come boldly to the throne of grace and I am obtaining mercy, not what I deserve. And I find grace, your love and ability and power to help me in this time of need. I needed comfort, Stephen. I ask you to forgive me for my feelings, hurt feelings of rejection and disappointment and betrayal. I bring Stephanie and Jim and Brian. Brian was, Brian was the youth pastor and he's the one who invited his my people to his so uh, I bring Stephanie and Jim and Pastor Brian to you to the throne of grace and I choose to forgive them and I choose to bless them and I choose to love them with your love that resides on the inside of me I declare that I am dead to sin and alive unto righteousness I am dead to hurt feelings rejections childishness and I'm alive into the fruit of righteousness, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. I forgive as Christ has forgiven me. I harbor no ill feelings. My life is hid with Christ in God, and I bless and rejoice with them. And so I commit all of this care into your hands. I roll my works off on you and my thoughts will be established. I cast this care, throw these concerns on you. And now I am carefree and I am wrinkle free and I leave them in your hands. And I say, praise God, I'm free. And so in church, when I see him, I, I don't feel bad. The Lord did it. He took my care and he did just exactly what, what he said he would do. So see how important uh, that is. Oh, let me tell you one. Oh, Kim, we need to leave, don't we? 
We need to leave. If there is a person, and I didn't do that for them, but sometimes in your background, somebody has hurt you deeply and, and you just want to forget them. You know, cast your care away. I just don't want to care about... Th- no, that isn't what we do. Uh, they have to be cared for by the hands of God. And so for a person that has hurt you, do the same thing that I just showed you there. Write it down. Put a ribbon on it. Because they're valuable and precious. They need to be forgiven. Sometimes people don't even know what they do. And so you just let them be forgiven. And so every time their name comes up, you just say, they're forgiven. They're forgiven. And they're in the hands of God. And they're blessed. So, Father, we're thankful for you today and that you've made a way. You've given us a destination of peace. And that peace belongs to us, Lord. And we choose to cast our care on you. For you do our caring. You take care of it. And we choose to leave our cares in your hands. And so, Father God, your thoughts will be our thoughts. And we'll say the right thing, Lord God. And we'll just give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.